cool, bag of peas or whatever, shaving the coal that I've lamped down. Back to the rod, back to casting. So, the tip I was saying, if you're taking the rod, put a little bit of tape on the cork handle. Just one round, won't affect the cork in any way, doing a little bit of season, no affect it. And that gives you a reference point, because if you use the holding up here, I'm used to doing that. That's the thing your default. You'll always want to go back to that. So if you've got a reference, like you, know, you could call it in with a bit of pain or something, that's going to spoil the rod a wee bit. A wee bit of tape on there, when you're taking up the rod anyway, you've got it on you. As a reference point, there, boom. But that is taking you flexing the rod. And what we want to do is to flex. It's not about casting. Casting is giving it and we have here throwing it forward. The more you throw it, the less efficient it is. Yeah? Flex the rod. There. Forward. Those are five foot ten. I'm not as slim as I used to be. I'll probably chuck them further near anyone else in Fana. I honestly will. And I'm, you know, some people used to be a bit disappointed years ago when I did the tournament cafe. Like, oh, guys coming from the Highlands of Scotland. Literally like William Wallace of a seven foot tall and shoulders and that. My eyes come in and go, I can't be Scott McKenzie, he's too small. It's not about the big you are, the stronger you are, the further you can. Quite the opposite. Get you that rod to do the work for you. Bend and flex. Now when you're casting, the natural thing, the natural place for you to put power is in the top hand. Okay? Most people will come round, even if you're holding the rod in the right position, and they'll lead with that top hand. And, and that encourages you to throw it forward, throw it forward, and clean the power. 75%, 80% of your power, oh man. But if you, you'll always put power in the top, but if you work with that bottom hand, that's getting you bending and flexing. There's your power is in the rod. The bend in the flex, the spring of that rod, is what's cast the line. What we've got here is the second generation rod. They're not a team out in the, the market yet. This is the FX2, moving on from award winning FX1. FX1 were the first rod in the world to be made with a material called graphene. Graphene is the light and strongest material known to man. The two professors that discovered graphene actually won the Nobel Prize for Physics for discovering graphene. Amazing, amazing material. We've got in rods and soon to come out in other products as well. This is the FX2. We came out with the rods back in 2015. The first company in the world to add graphene to double-handed rods. They really were. Groundbreaking technology. Now we've moved on. This rod's coming out next month. And they're the best rods we've ever made. They really are, because, you know, everyone else says, Scott, you know, it can't keep getting better and better. There has to be a point where the carbon and the, the weight has to come to an end. And you think, well, maybe you're right, but it's not. It's just the advancements are coming on all the time. The new carbon we're using with our FX technology and then it's way better, even what we and the, the FX1 was groundbreaking, the FX2s are another level again. So if you want to have a week try, these rods are not in the market, it's the only one we've got in the world. First time they've been in Ireland, first time they've been anywhere to be honest with you, just come in, it's only a sample. Come and try this. What does graphene do? Graphene gives you a very light, very strong rod, a given, a given. But graphene speeds up your cavity of glass. If that rod tip moves faster, your line moves faster. If your line moves faster in a projectile sport, it has to go further. Or using less power than you normally would, you'll still get the same distance as you normally would. So you can ease off, make life easy for yourself, see the same distance, or if you really want to get a bit more distance with minimal effort, for sure this will, will give you that. And you see that, I'm not taking a run, 
you get I'm not gonna jump, you get that line out there. I'll give I'm give that line time to straighten out behind me and I'm flexing the rod. I'm using that bottom hand to pull into my body. I'm pushing out, pulling back in, flexing it. Okay, so 45, 40 yards wide with effortless. You know? And you don't need to cast 40 yards. You know, half the time the fish are here. But if there is a time when you're on the morn or something, and you're seeing a big stone, fish fly by so and you do want to get the distance, then it's good to have something that's got the power underneath the bonnet to do that, for sure. We're starting a wee bit because we're on grass here. Normally we'd have to be on the water. But we it back, tell it forward and stop. And then so the wind's catching it going there, you can see the wind across it. But it's effort, and that's the way it should be. Now, Norm says, if anyone has any questions, as I said this earlier, and nobody put their hand up or ask a question. So there's only a few of us. Wow, well done, sir. There you go, well done. You can buy them. Yeah, you buy them on the this is a short headed spay light. Spay light, 50 foot head. Um, so we've got 50 feet out of the rod tip. It's not long. The days up in the north of Scotland, the Highlands Gulf, we, well, we said it was very spay casting. Alexander Grant, it was his and then spay casting, probably gillies on the river bay and then spay casting. But he was the guy that set the first ever world record a spay cast record on the net in 1895, where he left the cast 65 yards using a teen heart rod he made himself. And a silk line he got made by the hardest tweed weaver. Grant was five foot six, slim build, kept poor, poor health, small, fairly small, frail man, yet with a 21 foot green rod, rod, wooden rod, he made himself, he lived and passed 65 yards without shooting any line. Uh -huh. Oh no. All kinds use your bottom hand. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could, with a longer head, you could even it out a little bit more, but your minimum, absolute minimum, would be 50 50. 50 to dead top, 50 to bottom. But that was going back to, it wasn't that many years ago that we were using 75, 80, even 90 foot headed spay light. We don't with the make a light along the line we do now, 65 foot head. Because time you put a poly leader and your leader on in that, it's 70, it's 70 foot head. What's that, 23 yards? It's, it's long enough. The modern way is shorter head, and probably shorter rods, to be honest with you. Um, so much so, in the new FX2s here, we didn't make a 15 footer. We did one a 14 foot 9 inch and a 6 piece. But there's very little demand now for 15 foot rods. Um, just because you don't need them. You know, these, uh, this is a 14 foot rod, it's very light, and you'll throw easily 40 yards. You'll throw as far as you want. Well, effortless, and that's the way it should be, you know? Um, so, you, you know, you would always use bottom hand because as soon as you get in that danger of doing that, you're throwing that arm forward. If you do that an exaggeration, do that, it's going nowhere, okay? So you always have to use, you want to get that pivot going, bend and flex. If you can't do that by one hand, the rod won't bend. But when you push and pull, I'll get it going, I'll probably tangle the line doing that, but so you always want to get that flex going. In the modern day, you head, the shorter one, you are kind of bringing it round, tapping it, and using a lot of bottom hand. I nearly no. Oh, somebody's shooting at me. Tell me that. <laughs> um, yeah, so no, always, always minimum would be both both hands, minimum 
Uh, here I would be saying in a fairly short, as in 50 foot head, um, about 75 percent, not much uh, control in it. But where you want to control it from, you, you know, you always put top hand in. So at all times, I would always say to people, concentrate on the bottom hand, push it out, pull back in. And you get used to doing that in a pivot going, it will, it can't can do anything else but go quick, because you're getting that bend and flex into the road. <laughs> Don't try to if I want to finish here just now, just give it a wee go. Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> How much? Oh. <laughs> Priceless! <laughs> uh, they're, they're just over a thousand pounds. A lot of money, but this is... I was going to say it's state of the art. And without any nonsense, it's probably stage more than that. It honestly is. Um, this is a real latest aerospace carbon with our FX technology put in it. Um, we're now the biggest supply of high-end fly fishing tackle in Scotland now. Um, and we've got some fantastic kit, we really, really do. But come and try, kid. Kid, go on. Do you want to go? Where we go? Come on, you Ah, you'll just get in there. Money for time. Everybody look out road over there. Oh, we are in for time. He's living the lane out long, too. Five minutes. Aye, nice to meet you. I'm so, aye, aye, pleased to meet you, buddy. I'll just move this all day to the way. Aye. If you catch a fish, you get a free rod. Aye. So, just about the colour change. It's hard here because we're all grass and all the rest of it. But oh, sold. What line would you normally fish in? <laughs> and he was doing so well there at that point, was he? He was. <laughs> so they, they're short-headed lines, so they're quite short. Yeah, yeah. They, they <laughs> Morrison, a yeah. little short stroke. Yeah. Yeah. I, do, I do call it kind of, I love how um, Henrik, a great guy. Uh, uh, I, wind, I, wind, I know, no, I don't know, I, I genuinely do. But I call it a wee bit like a T-Rex fishing because it's all a little short stroke, and it's in here doing this. It's like T-Rex with little short arms. But it was here, called the spay line is in the two. Longer, longer head, wider stroke. You're coming from that angle to that angle. That's your casting angle there. Ten and two feet past. You can, yeah, here, you can have 10 people here showing you the fake taxi, and they'll all show you slightly different things. And the ideal thing to do is to pick a little bit of what people say and do, and think, well, that doesn't suit me, but oh, that may be better, that'll suit me. By jamming the, the rod into your body, it works, but I would say keep the rod out from your body, here, and doing that, and doing that, it's better than kind of jamming it in. You're kind of locking it in here. You'll get more distance keeping the rod out. That's what I say. I'm no, no. I was going to say Charles Atlas. Maybe a lot of people would know. Remember who he was? A big body build, body builder from the 60s, 70s. And I'll take a long, very, very long way. But and that's more technique. But I would be there. In fact, for the distance, I'd be taking the road further back and coming from in there. Because all that is, is a single hander. A single hander and a double hander in physics are exactly the same. It's just that you need arms like top bite to be able to cast that with your single hander. So you've introduced a bottom hand to this. So, in distance single casting, he would say when we change three positions, but you come back that longer stroke right back because more speed. You pick up two golf balls, take one to two o'clock, throw it, 
will go quite far. See, a buck there could go further. So more speed can be generated over a longer stroke. We know that. And if we put that into the casting and take the rod back almost horizontal, you're going to get more speed going forward. It's going to go further. So in single-handed rod, you do that back there. So I took that theory, that idea, into double-handed rods. So I was coming back low, fast, flatter, and that then created a V, not a D loop, giving more tension. And from there, woof, it, it, it couldn't be beaten. And, and at the time, you know, I was up against a great caster like Ian Gordon and some of these boys. Ian's a fantastic caster, very stylish, traditional spade caster, but he's round, forward, and he goes, and he can cast a long, long way. But he couldn't compete with that cast doing there. Because it's like, right, say to someone, you can only take your arm to there. And the person who gets the distance throwing a stone in a golf ball wins. The person who's doing it is going to win every time. It has to. So it is physics involved in the in casting for sure, like, you know. Ah, you're very welcome. Thanks very much. Yeah. Guys, we made more to try and hang. We're here. We've got all the tasks of single handed rods, switch rods, double, uh, double handed rods. Some uh, new new lines. We've got right. the biggest problem I've got with them is keeping them in stock. They're honestly fantastic. And I'm not just saying that. It's um, how was it about to start? So I'll call it. Uh, we call them a tegra. It just takes away that loop to loop connection. Especially if you're fishing at close range. So it's different maybe in the morning. You're always got the headache. But if you're wanting to fish somewhere.